Uh, we're joined by Martin Bailey. He served as the chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors during the Clinton administration, and he's now a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. Martin, thank you very much for joining us. So, first Great of all, let's talk about tomorrow, what the statement might bring. Do you think there's going to be any substantive change in what the Fed's message will be? Well, I wouldn't expect much change, but clearly the economy uh, is really beginning to turn around. Uh, I think there are some estimates. You mentioned macro advisors. I think they're now thinking there'll be over 4% growth in the, in the fourth quarter. So we really have stepped back from the abyss, and I think the Fed will, you know, it's trying to do a balancing act. It doesn't want to raise rates too early or discourage the recovery, which is only very new and very fragile. On the other hand, it doesn't want to get people um, concerned about inflation, so I think it wants to signal that it's aware of the issue of inflation, it's, it's unwinding, it's uh, quantitative easing, it's thinking about what the right time is to start to raise rates, but it's not going to do it yet. Well, and on the point of inflation, you heard uh, Mike talking about the uh, PPI numbers that we got today, which were higher than had been expected. Do you think that this is an anomaly, or do you think that inflation indeed is heating up a little bit? No, I don't think it, inflation is heating up uh, yet. I, I think it is a bit of an anomaly. It's a number that bounces around a great deal from month to month. Um, looking at the core CPI or, or looking at the price increases in the, infl in the GDP report are probably a better I indicator. So, you know, the, the core inflation has been going down. I think anyone would be satisfied that that's, uh, that's the case. And we still have unemployment at 10 percent and, as you mentioned, a lot of slack capacity around the economy. So I don't see a threat of inflation uh, anytime uh, soon. Uh, the Fed obviously, however, wants to make sure that inflation expectations don't rise. Um, and so it wants to give uh, markets the, the message that it's, it's ready to raise rates when, when things uh, do, do fully turn around. Well, um, and Martin, you know, as we were just talking about as well, there's an added dimension here because the Fed doesn't only have to sort of speak to the markets and to economists, it has to speak to politics as well and what's going on in Congress coming under unprecedented regulatory scrutiny. How do you think that's going to affect the Fed's decision-making process? Well, I don't think it will, and I, and I think certainly uh, the folks at the Fed, the, the members of the Open Market Committee will tell you that they're not influenced by those kind of political uh, considerations. But, but is but, that, you know, is that we realistic? All, <laughs> well, we all live in the real world, and uh, they, they want to um, make it clear that they're on the side of an economic recovery. I, I think Bernanke will be uh, confirmed. That seems to be the, the betting. So I would not expect uh, this statement to be unduly influenced by politics, but um, you know, everybody's got to be aware of that. And do you think that, uh, as some, especially ex-members of the Fed, have, have said that these new regulations are going to put a damper on how the Fed makes decisions? Yes, I think it's um, a mistake to uh, bash the Fed. Uh, I myself have suggested that they may not want to be as involved in bank regulation as they have been, which is not something they've done particularly well, but I don't view that as uh, Fed bashing. Uh, I think it's really too bad that people are bashing the Fed and bashing Bernanke, because I think he has done an extraordinary job of turning this economy around, and I think he should get the credit for it. And so the specific ap approach to audit the Fed, I mean, it sort of sounds innocuous. Maybe in practice it would be innocuous, but I think it sends the wrong message uh, that the Fed's done a bad job. And I think in turning things around, that's not true at all. So if the Fed does take a step back from regulation, as you think they should, then, then who fills that gap? Just quickly here. Well, I would like to see a, a single strong um, national financial regulator for uh, all uh, regulated financial institutions, although I certainly think the Fed should have access to all the information it needs to, to make monetary policy. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure whether that will happen. We'll have to see. All right. Martin, unfortunately, we're out of time. Martin Bailey of the Brookings Institution.